All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Jennifer Peak from the Peak Advisory Group and she is in Kansas City, Missouri today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. Excellent. And I'm as usual here in, in San Diego. And uh, Jennifer uh, provides clients with key strategic insights, helping them to develop plans to execute on their business and profitability. And that's one of the things that we wanted to talk about today is how to build profitable revenue and cash flow in your business. Because let's face it, uh, Jennifer, especially with small startup businesses or whatever, the scramble is always there just for revenue. It's not always there for profitable revenue. It's there just for revenue, (laughs) right? Yeah, absolutely. And so what are some of the things that people should look at um, from the get-go to make sure as they execute on their vision that they are keeping in mind maybe some of the, you know, the, the hidden traps that they can fall into? Well, the first one is making sure that you actually have the data, um, Mm -hmm. that you're capturing it so that even if you're not looking at it right out of the gate, that you have it available to you for analysis further on. You know, so one of the things that you said earlier was for the first thing that you're focused on, are we making any sales? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Profit doesn't really matter if you're not making any sales. Sure. But but once you are are getting a little bit more traction with your sales and you have some ongoing revenue, then you can start to look at the profit. And it'll help you understand what you're doing well, what's easy to execute on, um, what's really adding to your bottom line. And it can even help you discover the stuff that's, it may be costing you money, Mm -hmm. right? It may be adding to your top line, but it's costing you so much to deliver it that you'd be better off not doing it at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I think that's a key point because I think it's one thing that people often overlook. I, for instance, right, the biggest destroyer of homes in the US is not fire, it's not flood, it's not like hurricanes, it's termites, right? Because and they're hidden away, you know, eating away at your house before you know it collapses. But in business often it's it's like that because as you said, you need the data. Sometimes people are not tracking all of the expenses that are going, all the cost of sales, right? And all the different resources that are being pulled in. And as you say, may end up with unprofitable revenue. Absolutely. And the, and for a lot of um, folks who are starting out, their, their real cost is their time. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of invisible. Um, yeah. And that's that's one of the big things that we see with consultants or other service providers when what you're doing, especially if it's if it's your time and you're not paying somebody, like you don't have an employer or a contractor, and, it, and it, it's sort of invisible, but the, there's an opportunity cost to the fact that you are spending your time doing that thing instead of getting another client or doing more sales conversations, you know, what there's opportunity costs there as well. And that, you know, the last thing that anybody wants to do is track their time, but Mm -hmm. that can be one of the best exercises that you could do, even if you just do it on a handful of your engagements. Yeah, because I mean, as you say, I mean, particularly if you're a, a if you're a consultant or a sole proprietor, you're a very small business. It's very easy to start giving away your time for free, isn't it? And Absolutely. thinking, well, if I invest a lot, if I give a lot of extra time and attention here, it'll come back to me later. But there may not be a later if I keep doing that. that, that <laughs> that's a very good way to put it. There may not be a later if you keep giving it all away. Um, and and it it can also help you figure out. Um, what kind of clients you work best mm-hmm. with. Uh, boundary setting or scope creep in the professional sense is a very real issue. And so that's something to also keep in mind that if you're just giving more and more time that, you know, eventually it may turn into revenue, but it might not. Um, yeah. And that, that there's certainly a balance to that. And and also on that on that point of the right kind of uh, of of clients to go after, and also to set the the right um, you know to set the ground rules and and so forth um, early on. I mean, the other part is you know cash flow because it's one thing. It's right. It's maybe you can go out and find some revenue from customers, but if they're ones that suddenly like pay you in 120 days right. instead of 30 days, and you're a small business, that's not helpful either. That, that's absolutely right. There's a lot of um, challenges around 
So now you have to become a collection agent, right? Mm -hmm. So there, there's, there's that issue. You don't want to do that with your extra time. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's hard work to get the work in the door sometimes, especially when you're just starting out and then to have it exacerbated by folks not paying you is it, it feels like it's just another kind of punch in the gut. You're like, mm -hmm. I did all the work and now I can't get the money in the door. And, you know, once it does start coming in, you can feel a little bit better about it, but you still have that problem, right? You still have people paying you late, even mm -hmm. if you're finally feel like you're catching up and it's a dangerous cycle to get into um, because if you have too many of those types of clients that are paying you late, then, you know, the, the cash flow is, is a real problem. And, and the reality of it also is this. The later they pay you, the less likely it is you're going to get paid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's uh, and especially for small businesses or, or sole uh, proprietors or whatever, consultants and the like, um, often it's big companies, unfortunately, who right. take ad take advantage of, of because they know you're well, you, you to go sue me. Right. Right. <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, so I think it is very important that you, as you say, you pick the right type of customers and you set the right kind of ground um, rules. What are some other things that you would advise uh, people as as they as they set up their business, or even as maybe as they mature their business to ensure that they're going after um, and focused on profitable revenue? You know, one of the things is that the more I mean, we hear it all the time, right? You need to. I'm going to say that, you know, you need to really hone your business down at niching, if you will, mm -hmm. um, and, and really dial that in. And, you know, one of the things that we have found with our clients and even for me in my own business is the more focused I am on delivering a few key items, the easier it is for me to have a sense of my profit, right? Mm -hmm. As, and, and it becomes really clear. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, because you're not scattered and you're not trying yeah. to figure out profit on a whole bunch of different projects or different clients or, or those types of things. And the other thing is, is that you can really get very good at delivering those few things that you're focused on, right? So your efficiency increases, your ability to deliver faster increases. You know, you can, it, not only do you keep your costs down, but you also drive up your profit. So it, it, and and that can just take some testing, right? I, mm -hmm. I don't know that everybody is able to do that, even in their first year of business. Certainly, the faster you can get there, the better off you'll be. But some of it is just marketplace testing. You're like, what's really in demand? What are people really going to pay for? And what can we knock the ball out of the park on on a consistent basis? Yeah, and I think there's a great there's a couple of great uh, points just to underline there. The first one is focus, as you say, you have to figure out what you're best at and focus on it because if you don't um you are going to get dragged all over the place and uh you know that's never a good thing and the second thing as you say is the more you deliver you know a service or a set of services the more repeatable the process can become and therefore the more profitable it can become because you're not you're not starting from scratch each time that's exactly right yeah. It's easier to become process focused when you are really trying to do it as a process. And I know that for a lot of service providers, you want to give individual service, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. really want that value added. And in some cases, high touch delivery. Um, that doesn't mean you can't standardize it and yes. that you can't make it efficient. And so the, the sooner that you can get there, the easier it'll be on your revenue and your profit and, and, you know, minimize the sleepless nights. Yeah, and I, and I would hazard that, uh, I guess, that with a lot of the clients you work with, that uh, focus is probably the first thing that you have to really work with them on because it is so tempting, as we said earlier, especially you, you, you're, you're, t you're either market testing or you're just trying to grab everything that you can be running in a hundred different directions. Uh, right. And let's face it, as, as, as human beings, somehow we're genetically wired to hate making choices, right? <laughs> we never want to make choices. We want it all, right? It's oh, like yeah. I always say, if you give somebody a choice of three doors to walk through, there's a chance they'll choose one of the doors. If you give them eight doors, they'll just stand there. They'll be paralyzed because it's That's too much right. choice. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, you know, in the very beginning, most people's criteria on, on what constitutes a customer are, can they fog a mirror and write a check? 
Mm-hmm. And the only thing you can truly test for at the beginning is can they fog a mirror? Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. the write a check part, you kind of have to wait and see a little bit. So mm-hmm. the, the, if you yeah. can add stuff to that, it's better. Yeah. So how do you help then? I mean, as, as people mature, their business, I mean, how do you help people get that focus? Because as I said, it's difficult for some people because you may say to them, listen, yes, you could make some money over here, but it's not going to be as profitable as the money you make here. So why not like set that aside and focus over here? Yeah, it's interesting. I was meeting with um, a potential client earlier today and we were having that conversation around how do you figure out where you're actually making money? Like mm-hmm. more specifically than just in your company. Sure. Yes. And, and you know, some easy ways to do that. The, the biggest thing that I was telling them was, you know, what information do you already have available? Like, let's not go invent this giant machine to spit out all of this reporting because you're not going to get it built and then you're not going to have any information to use. So mm-hmm. what information do you already have available? Like how long, you know, it, even if it's, if it's for, for this particular client, they have a physical product, right? So right. they would be capturing costs related to their physical mm-hmm. product. But if you're a service provider, you can still do that. You know, track your time on mm-hmm. a couple of projects. How much were you able to charge for that project? Like you can leave collections out of it for the time mm-hmm. being. But figure out what are some of those really easy data points for you to gather. Because until you have that information, it's really hard to make a decision about what your next step should be. Um, if you if you're just like I have no idea how to even start tracking my data, um, there are bookkeepers that can help you, mm-hmm. and you don't have to pay a lot of money for that. They, if you don't have an accounting system, they can help you get it set up. You don't even need a full accounting system. Just how much time did you spend? How much money did you get? Yeah. Um, so. And- and, and like I said, I mean, you, as you said before, I mean, those are things that, you know, they're not the most exciting things to do early on, especially, or you, you want to be chasing, as we say, you want to be chasing business and out and about, but uh, uh, but you're never going to know unless you start tracking. And as you said, you don't have to track it down to the minutia, right. but the significant costs. Yeah. And the, the, the biggest thing that I try to encourage folks to do is to just get started with something Because Mm -hmm. what typically happens is that people reach a breaking point before they try to look at it. And and that means look at anything, right? I'm going to run out of money or I'm so, I'm exhausted. I'm working 15 Mm -hmm. hours a day and I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere. (laughs) And, you know, all of those kinds of things that can plug business owners. So just starting to gather the information will help you immensely, even if you're not sure what you're going to do with it. Yeah. And I think it's a it's a very good discipline, um, obviously going for because you're gonna have to do it anyway eventually. It's a good thing to to get started as as soon as you can. And it might surprise you. I mean, I think that's the thing about data as long as you don't go crazy with it, is that uh it it'll often surprise you at what it tells you. It it will. And and I would really like in this exercise, so you know, there was a study done, I and it's been several years ago now, but it was the the one of the secret weapons of the folks who went on diets and lost weight and kept it off was the fact that they kept a food log, mm-hmm. right? So the very idea that you were going to have to write down what you were eating would stop people from eating. <laughs> and, you know, you can kind of use the same analogy here. If you're, if you are tracking your time and you're writing down all of the time that you're spending with specific clients, you may think twice about over investing in yeah. some of that work that you're doing. Yeah, and I think that's great because yeah, if you put, if you make sure you've a, you have a you have a dollar figure for whatever that time costs and um, and you you record it, yeah, I think it will surprise you very quickly, the extra little bits of time you put yep. in here, there, and everywhere, and and you have to ask yourself what is is there additional value being created or are you are you just over servicing because you think that's the right thing to do? Right. Yeah, and then, and in fact, and in fact, if you said if you said to the client, "I'm going to charge you extra for that," you know, extra hour I spent with you, they may say, "Well, I didn't actually really need that." Yeah, yeah, and it, and and all of that then kind of goes loops back into the what is the service that you're really providing mm-hmm. that you're knocking it out in the park on, and and how do you make that as efficient and high value as possible? so that it serves both you and your customer. 
because your customer is not going to be served very well if you go out of business. Yeah, it is. And like you said, I mean, this is that this this stuff tends not to come naturally to a lot of people, especially if they're entrepreneurial, especially if maybe they're more leaning towards the sales side and that the idea of of recording things and actually tracking the profitability. Yeah. I mean, I ran an organization one time when, uh, you know, uh, the parent company. Um, uh, the parent company incented me on on profit, so I was acutely aware of it. But I, but that was fine. I had to get the salespeople to be acutely aware of it too, because you know they they just they just thought top line, top line, top line. Yeah, absolutely. I was like I was like, no, no, no. We're going to calculate the projected profitability of this piece of business before I say yes. Yes. I, that, yes. Yeah, and it is it is very interesting. Um, one of the things that I I tell my clients is. You can't make everything up on volume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you lose a penny on everything you sell, you will lose a lot of pennies. (laughs) Exactly. You'll never make it up on volume. You'll never make it up on volume. You're just going to lose a lot more pennies. And that's and and I think that's a great point for us to to end on here because I think that's the thing is especially if you're not tracking things and you don't really or you're not tracking things well enough and you don't really understand the cost of 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 the business or the revenue that you're going after you will chase volume all the time you'll think if I just get more if I just get more it's going to it'll one day it'll all turn around and I'll be hugely profitable and it turns out well you won't be because you haven't actually calculated everything that's yet. right. Yeah, this has been really fascinating, Jennifer. So before we go, I'd just like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself, what you do and how they can find out more about you. Absolutely. So um, as John mentioned, when we started, my name is Jennifer Peak, and I run the Peak Advisory Group. You can find us at peakadvisory.com. So P-E-E-K advisory.com. And we work with all types of businesses, um, from startup to mature businesses. And we're really focused on a couple of key aspects. Certainly the one that we were just talking about, which is cash flow and profitability. Um, We do short-term projects with a lot of our clients just to get their systems set up. Um, We do longer-term projects as well. For some of our clients, we're actually working as outsourced controllers or CFOs um, to help them understand things on a more routine basis. And then we have also worked with companies that are planning to exit their current business and Mm -hmm. move on to their next exciting entrepreneurial venture. So we help make sure that everything's in shape so that when they get ready to sell there, it's easy to get through the process. Excellent. This has been great, Jennifer. And uh, I think there's some great takeaways for everybody out there. Most importantly is track what you're doing. Okay, track it. And then you just might be surprised what uh, what the data tells you. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you off for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. <laughs>